All right, bang, bang. It's the rundown from Chicago. It's Wednesday. It's December 15th. No White Sox, Dave, so it's just going to be the three of us today. Um, we'll miss him, right? Yeah. Miss him already. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. find out. Um, the rundown today is brought to you by Hooters. Hooters is your go-to spot for killer wings and ice cold beer, but football season means all the big games on the big screens. And it's the only place where you can have – where you can watch the game with the world's famous Hooter girls, mm -hmm. uh, our homie Dave's favorite part of the experience. Yeah, they're so much prettier than your friends at home. Mm -hmm. uh, hang out with the Hooters girls. I like their Daytona style wings, and and I like them with the Daytona sauce. That I've always loved them like that. that I mean, this is uh, a <laughs> <this is laughs> little plagiarism going on here. This Just is a big <laughs> plagiarism. I'm telling you, okay, the Daytona style wings with the T Daytona style sauce is a is a hidden gem at Hooters. Smoked wings too. Yeah, try it out, and you will thank me later. So try Daytona style with Daytona sauce. That's my, uh, that's my Hooters uh, little little party trick that I get. When that I picture of Dave when we were there, what is it, beginning of November, when mm -hmm. he took a picture with the Hooters girls, you you just can't fake that level of joy. <laughs> like our foul Classic. little boy was having a great time. That was there. like the face when the White Sox clinched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go pop in a Hooters, watch the big games. It's a great spot to watch uh, all the action. Or if you can't get out there, make sure you order it at home because we've got a great deal here. Uh, if you go to Hooters.com slash Barstool and use code Barstool, you get $10 off for $50 plus orders, which is a good deal. Uh, you know, And a couple buddies will get there by no time, so you'll save a bunch of money. Um, once again, Hooters.com slash Barstool for details. Go check that out. Uh, first topic of the day, uh, Nancy Reagan was all over trending and shit. And I was very like interested in why. Shocking reason why. Uh, apparently, she liked to give blowjobs, and they're calling her the throat goat now. Uh, you're like the biggest uh, presidential guy, is that fair to say? Yeah, History so. guy? Yeah. yeah. Um, your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, everybody was giving Trump, like, a hard time, like, oh, like, Melania, can she be, like, a proper first lady? Meanwhile, 40 years earlier, we got a woman who was famous for giving blowjobs. It's not that just that she liked him. It's that she was also the greatest who ever did it. So I don't know, like how many she like i need the numbers i need like like a, a fan graphs of like how many blowjobs nancy reagan gave out also a little known fact about nancy reagan or maybe not little known she was like huge into astrology and like had the keys like the chief of staff for reagan had to like run his schedule through nancy to make sure it was like lined up with the stars and shit oh, like really? so she was like she was a little out there nutty on that end, and then now you got this story too. So crazy, crazy stories for Nancy Reagan. I've always wondered if we missed out on the blowjob era, and it seems like we did. Because you go back and read about some of her accomplishments on the MGM lot, and it just seems like blowjobs were flying around everywhere back then. The stories about her, and I just, today and these days, it just doesn't, it doesn't hit like back then. Who's the other, like, I feel like you just climbed in the entertainment industry, it's just blowjobs were everywhere. What may, what's interesting to me is like now I feel like it's more of an era where it's like oh it's very sex positive and like oh do what you want mm -hmm. like everyone gets a little freaky, but like it was like that back then it seems too all the boys were lining up on the MGM lot like you said you know like that's but like, it's but we're not finding out about it really until it's like a sex positive time I but it's but it's just interesting that hey yeah. this was still you know she still I think has three or four living children can you imagine like oh, logging yeah, it's on tough. To the that's what I was, <laughs> it's, it's disrespectful yeah. in my opinion I like, thought that R I P uh, Nancy the throat goat but, but it's nowadays like, people go back and they're like they're like they everybody just gets villainized over time and I just now that the throat goat stuff's coming out it's like oh and her her position on education was unfair too just yeah. shut the fuck up oh yeah second. i didn't see any of oh, there, was, there a, was a lot of blue checks like don't let that distract well, you from exactly this. well she sure. also had well she was like just say no like that like she was like the war on drugs first oh, really? lady and she didn't say no very often apparently <laughs> so uh but yeah so that was a shocking story when i saw that i had i hadn't heard that before had you no okay absolutely not everybody right. people were talking about it like it was like oh it was like a known thing like the way it like took off so crazy, crazy. uh next story here steph curry broke the uh nba three-point shooting record of all time last night at the garden carl what do you got uh congratulations to steph curry first off second the warriors i don't know if you've got what you guys have watched them play the ball flies around like at, like I've never seen before in an NBA team. Whatever Steve, yeah, it's whatever Steve Kerr's doing, and he's talking to these guys. He's a fucking genius. He's like the Pep Guardiola of the NBA. I'll say this though: if Steph Curry's coach 
played in a different era, we might be talking about Steve Kerr as the greatest shooter of all time, guys. I saw it firsthand. So. He's up there. Yeah. He's up there. But And, and I, we're just in the three-point era. It's like you almost think like Steph's the greatest shooter of all time, but you know there's some kid who's like 12 right now just wants to be the next Steph Curry who's going to break this record. Because it's just like efficiency, and it's like all the stats say shoot more threes, you get more points. So I feel like this is like he broke – it was Ray Allen, right? Yes. And then who had it before him? Like didn't it stand for a while? I mean, did they have this? I mean, there was probably yeah, not so a it, it was Ray <laughs> Allen. Let's say he broke yeah. that – he set that, mate, what, 10 years ago? Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's going to be one of those records that, that just keeps gets, being get broken. broken. Yeah. Uh, you know what makes me laugh? You say that there's probably so many youth coaches, like old guys, who just like know the <laughs> fundamentals of basketball and have these kids doing George Mike and drills, and they're just like beyond frustrated. Do with how not many sleep on the baby <laughs> hook. The you baby know? hook still plays. If you Don't. can. If you can do a baby hook, you can go a long way. All right, guys, get the left hand layup line going. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the worst things you can hear as a twelve year old. I know, and then they got these kids probably just launching these threes, and they probably just are losing their hair on the court <laughs> yeah. all over it. It's crazy. Yeah. No balls that. in practice today. You ever have a coach like that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Fingertip yeah. push ups yeah. in seventh grade, Mister yeah. Barba. No dribbling. Tough stuff, um, man. I uh, congrats to Steph. Steph's yeah. easy got to root for. He's one of the best that we've seen awesome um and uh i, I just you know it would always bother me i just wish durant never went there and i know this is a different conversation but if he just stuck with him clay and draymond like that's still so much like that's such a yeah. cooler team to me and like a cooler story yeah the vibe of watching them now without kd it's, they're still awesome i yeah. mean they're awesome they play relentless defense everybody can shoot from outside it's this, great this guy wants lebron to have had more rings that's what he No, wants. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I truly do. Are you pro LeBron, but, Eddie? But it's just the fact Red that. Red Ed, pro LeBron, can't but, believe but it. But, like, they were so good. You yeah. Know, there. I don't know. It's just like we're going back into quicksand. Yeah, well, they won hey, like 70, 73 games or whatever it was. Yeah, they were and they were all, like, they were yeah. already good. It's crazy. Yeah. I got to sneak it in. You bring up KD. Uh, Skip Bayless had a tweet last night where he was, like, talking <laughs> shit to LeBron. He was, like, talking shit to LeBron. Like, KD's the best. KD, quote, tweet, I really don't like you. <laughs> He's great. I mean, it's that like, was a I've, kill shot. I've come to like warm up to KD and like don't like hate him anymore. Like yeah. I, he's like all right now, but yeah, I don't know. I just wish he did something. Well, I, I do think like the '90s, with, like the Bulls having to go through the Pistons and then the, yeah. the battles with the Knicks and all. Like you like that when the talents yeah. kind of spread out and you can kind of be like the build up to like the big big series and the yeah. Pacers and all that. And it's just like we kind of skipped that. Like yep. we kind of got to a point where it was like LeBron versus. The Warriors every year. And that's yeah, just and not ha- as I'm fun. Just, just happy the Warriors because now it's mostly homegrown again. And yep. that's what that's mm-hmm. what I like. Um next thing we got Dan Snyder. Uh surprise, surprise, another story broke about uh him being a piece of shit. Uh Carl, what do you got? Uh Dan Snyder used to be one of those guys where I was like, Oh, you can be this stupid and this successful. He's mm-hmm. the youngest guy in the history of the New York Stock Exchange to like take a company public as a CEO. He was like thirty two years old or something. Bought oh, wow. bought the Redskins for eight hundred million, like yeah, as a fucking young guy and also he and he's a bozo, so it's like oh anybody could do it, right? <laughs> I, but now these stories come out and he seems like such a filthy cocksucker scumbag that it's like maybe he's just had all this success because he's just a filthy cocksucker just scumbag. Diabolical, yeah. He's just a he's just an awful diabolical. Yeah, thank he you. He is. I remember like when he first bought the Redskins, being like, this is the way to do it. Like, self-made guy, and then he went out immediately and, like, ran it as if it was a Madden in franchise mode. Like, he signed Bruce Smith. He signed yeah, Deion yeah. Sanders. He was like, oh, my God, he's just getting all the best guys. Like, this is awesome. And then it's like, oh, that didn't work, and you're a complete piece of shit. So it seems like – I don't know what the – what does the league do now? Like – uh, I mean, the leagues are where they were. I mean, they had that full report. They said they had no findings, which is bullshit. Right, but now more and more stuff keeps coming out. Well, they I mean, they protected him at the beginning. So this guy has like some type of force field. He's got some type of fucking. I know. You know what does uh, he Super have Smash Brothers though? bubble yeah. in front of him? That but just, it's like you know they came down hard on the Patriots and the Saints. But it's like he had nothing on. This guy's got something. It's, he's got something. I don't know. Who is the? I'm blanking on his name now, which breaks my heart because it's one of my all all time favorite like court readings. The guy who they forced to sell the Clippers after all like Donald the, Sterling. Donald Sterling. That you don't think that there's any possibility the league does that to the Reds to uh, the Washington football team? I just feel like it would have happened, right? Like they had the opportunity right there, like it was there for the taking. Like they yeah. went through like what a billion emails, and like oh, all we found was John Gruden. Actually, it's like that dude, was... that's like such a cop out. 
But um, but with all yeah. these new reports, it's like if you keep turning up the gas, is they're eventually like, hey, like even we can't deny this now. I almost feel like he's at the point where he's been reported on so much that like all the stories are like desensitized. You know, Maybe. like everything's just like, well, all right, another day. Like, and everyone has lost their outrage. Yeah, I mean, that's how I've, but that, that Yeah, in this most different. recent case, it's about him intimidating a witness that was supposed to come forward in this like investigation process and like the depth that Dan Snyder's willing to go to to harass, intimidate, impose people to get them away from um, yeah. like the truth coming out. But I think it's also owner culture because it's not just yeah. Goodell. Goodell works for the owners, mm -hmm. and if you're going to have to get rid of them, I think it's like the owners that come together. And the more that, like, the more you think about it, the more it seems like the owners boys club and shit is probably some really that owners party they get together whatever is probably some really fucked up stuff going on there i uh, wonder if the only reason i keep saying they might force a sale is because all this stuff keeps coming out in the washington post bezos has been rumored to want a football team he owns the washington post so could he be the guy being like keep fucking digging let's maybe. i want that team in that city boom like maybe. go get it like it. It's a good conspiracy. Uh, while we're selling the NFL, uh, it sounds like 2024 Super Bowl is going to be in Vegas. It's moving out of New Orleans to, uh, I guess, they had like a scheduling conflict. There was Mardi Gras or something I saw, which is crazy. But makes sense. Mardi Gras is so fucking big. Um, Dante wrote a blog saying it should be played there every year. Do you agree with that? I mean, they can alternate like Vegas one year and then give me like a Toledo the next year, then Vegas one year, then like El Paso. Because if you just do this like all Vegas stuff, you're just going to dilute the power of the Super Bowl to me. It's just going to become too – like why does Vegas get to catch the windfall of hosting the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Especially with the Bears building Arlington. You know, like if this happens, I think I, I, I think there's a chance. Like it would be great to see the Super Bowl spread out across America. But there is an appeal to Vegas, just not every year. That's crazy to me. Yeah, it, it does seem like they have like a rotation of like six or eight. Like L.A. gets it. Uh, New Orleans gets it. Miami Arizona, gets Tampa. it. Arizona, like the, the, like the big stadium, warm weather. And like Vegas certainly fits into that, and it would be awesome. But doing it every year, I think I'm with you on that, where it's just like – I don't know. It, to me, it's just it, – it, and then it. I think you're going to have guys eventually getting in trouble too. Like it, who was the guy? Was it Eugene Robinson got in trouble before the, the Super Falcons Bowl? The Falcons guy? Yeah. I yeah. think like if you, have, if you have that bye week before the Super Bowl yeah. and it's in Vegas, you're opening up like Pandora's box for guys to be suspended for the Super Bowl. Yeah, there's just so many like nooks and crannies for people to be hanging out yeah. and can't watch them. Yeah. I don't you know, know how many years in a row I, like somebody – like would you want to be going to the Flamingo every – so I, I think I, I, I'm similar to your take. I could maybe warm up to the idea of, like, maybe Vegas gets it every even year or something. Oh, every uh, other? Yeah, like, I, I could maybe warm up to that uh, because I've never been. But from what I understand, it's all about practicality. And, you know, reading Dante's blog, like, I guess, like, you know, some of the driving you'd have to do it, like Miami or Houston was mm -hmm. just absurd. Um, so, like, maybe I could see that since everything's literally right there. Yeah. And it's big enough. It has all the infrastructure. Um, but I do think the beauty of the Super Bowl is like, oh wow, it's it's here this year. Like, do you want to make the trip? Like, mm -hmm. you never know. It's 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 like uh, it's just like a lottery thing. It's would, just like a random out of a hat. It's kind of cool. Would you ever be in favor of more outdoor cold weather Super Bowls? I think they've only done the one, which is in uh, Giant Stadium. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like as a meathead, yes. Yeah. But then like. I mean, I don't know, as a viewer, like, I don't mind the snow games. People, like, get so mad at them, like, this is not football, it's not right. I love the These snow These guys games. worked all year for six months, and now they're playing in this shit where, you know, Mahomes is going to get to I don't know. It's just, it is what it is. But I, I think a snow Super Bowl would, like, one would be awesome. Like, you would be one of the, you would remember it forever. You would remember yeah. all the details of it. So Provided you have the right teams, though. Like, I would want, like, Ravens, Packers, if it was a snowy Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. if, if you bring out, like, Dolphins, fucking Rams, it's like, come on. Who are we, who are we kidding here, guys? Yeah. Other things, sorry. Just I think we're safe on the Dolphins getting to the Super Bowl yeah. for, for a while. Yeah. Vegas, walking, hate it. When you walk in Vegas, it's like, oh, I'm just going to go right over there. Oh, and then it's yeah. like two and a half hours later. So that's the only thing about the Super Bowl. Like that whole desert oasis thing really exists in Vegas. And I just, I can't, my depth perception in Vegas oh, it is just terrible. disappears. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, yeah, you could walk to everything. It's like, ah, I don't know, man. It's, it's mm. a lot further than you think. Like if you're staying at, you know, like Mandalay and New York, New York and mm -hmm. MGM right there, like it's easy. But if you're a little further, like it's yeah. still tough. Uh, but yeah. Interesting, nevertheless. Uh, and then there's this football story. 
Uh, Kevin James was casted to uh, play Sean Payton in a movie that's going to Netflix. Uh, did you guys watch the trailer? We'll start with uh, saw the trailer. We'll start with you, Chief. It looks awful. It looks terrible. And I'm a sucker for sports movies. I'll watch Draft Day with Costner. What was Costner doing? He loves sports movies. He couldn't play a better Sean Payton than Kevin James. I mean, I'm sure Costner maybe looked at what was going on there and was like, no. <laughs> no. I, it, it, I think if I'm Sean Payton, I suit. Like, how does he sign off on that? I think it, I think it speaks to the absurdity of his suspension where maybe his agent or someone <laughs> in his corner like is like, angle. yo, why don't we do just an absolute mockery in, of what happened? And if you're Sean Payton, I mean, yeah, I'm sure Daniel Craig's not, like, at the whim <laughs> ready to come over and put on a fucking visor. Yeah. But the fact that Kevin James is, like, a funny guy, sports guy – Think of all the publicity. The fact that we're sitting around talking about this, like we're all going to see this movie. They're probably just going to shit on the NFL. It's probably going to come out like a like an absolute comedy about how the NFL makes decisions. And but you say Sean Payton's suing. Like I'm surprised. Like for Kevin James to take that job, you think he's above? I mean, I've said this before. Like I can't just be like Walter White for Halloween. You know what I mean? Then I'm just a fat Walter White. Like <laughs> for him, it's like he's just a fat Sean Payton. It's like hard to it's hard to pull off. You know, it's yeah. kind of funny, though, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. And that's his thing. But uh, I guess. Yeah. Could, could they couldn't have cast him as like Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator for that? Yeah. You know, like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I it just and Daniel Craig and Sean Payton, they have those piercing blue eyes. So I don't hate that as a off the cuff casting. <laughs> so I don't know. It just seemed like it just seemed like uh what do you call it? Like shoehorning Kevin James into into that. Like it just doesn't make any sense. It is also distracting us from the fact that the reason this movie's being made in the first place is because Sean Payton was personally funding bounties on opposing teams' quarterbacks. <laughs> so like the yeah. more like, yeah, why don't we uh, How can we make this into a children's movie? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it. This is like, you know, well, we'll just do Little Giants, but like 25 years later. And Sean Payton gets to come out looking like a funny guy then, right? Like yeah. uh, some of the trailer, like Kevin James had some good lines in yeah. there. It's like, okay, yeah, I didn't know Sean Payton was that funny. I didn't yeah. know he was so lighthearted. Yeah, crazy, man. Um, Neighborhood guy, Sean Payton. Good for Kevin. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yep. Eastern Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, good for Kevin James, man. He's he just still doing it. Continuing to yeah. do it. Um, next thing here, Tommy Reese, Redline Radio Plug. Um, if you're a Notre Dame fan, it's a must listen, uh, chief. What do you got in this? I think if you're just like a sports college fan, football fan, yeah, like the, you're... like the business of college football and, and sports in general, like it, it like blew my mind. Like he used the perfect analogy comparing it to succession, like late night phone calls, black cars, private planes, trying to f millions of dollars on the line, trying to figure out what to do with his life, what side he's on. It was like a fascinating look into how college football works, how delicate it is like these programs are because Notre Dame, like they'll always have the brand. But if you lost Kelly Freeman Rees, your program is instantly in shambles. So they've been building this up for 10 years to get where they are and then they could be gone in a second. So that whole thing with the negotiations, it, it, to me, it was fascinating. So, and that goes on at every major college football program in the country, whether it's Oklahoma, USC, whoever. So to get a behind the scenes look at that from you know firsthand from tommy was was really i i thought it was very interesting mm -hmm. i was with two other assistant coaches and he told us hey guys i'm you know going to lsu we'll drop you guys off and i'm getting on another flight back to south bend i want to get with the team as soon as i can and so that, that was a very quiet plane ride you guys watch succession yeah yeah, yeah. Like the next like three days <laughs> it was like i was in the show succession trying to figure out like what side of the fence to fall on from sunday morning to wednesday mid-afternoon was like the most stressful time i've had and i seriously like the only thing i can compare it to is like an episode of succession it was like private jets private phone calls black cars <laughs> like midnight meetings bourbon it was like the whole thing was just like where do i fall in this whole in this whole situation so then did you go with kendall i guess <laughs> what's I the analogy know, yeah, there? i don't know <laughs> but, yeah. so when i was with coach kelly and all the boys i'm like i'm clearly greg the cousin in this <laughs> yeah go check it out yeah i mean it, yeah it's it the fact that he's sitting there talking about exactly in the moment brian kelly hey i gotta go take this phone call it's like oh wait a second i yeah. think he's about to leave us and yeah I mean, we had two of the most like shocking i mean one i guess look at riley wasn't totally totally shocking like no that, but brian kelly was shocking leaving shocking. notre dame to go to lsu yeah, yeah so like get more background on that so go check it out redline radio i always thought kelly would leave for the nfl too like that's like i i thought he would leave but i never thought it would be 
for another college team. So, like, even when I first heard the rumors, like, there's no way that's true. Like, he's just looking for an extension, yeah, like a negotiating play. So it turns out very real. And then <laughs> all the all the uh, the comings and goings that went into that was fascinating. Yep. Um, last one here. Uh, there are more UFO sightings or possible UFO sightings. Uh, Chief, what do you got? So that was uh, TMZ paid for this video, and I watched it. There's probably like 14 of these lights. It almost it looked like a um, like those spotlights that like new car dealerships when they open will like spray in the air they're circus like, yeah or or any like big event where you're like what are those and it's what's that for and they're just zipping around i i have uh i love aliens i love ufos we've talked about them on dog walk like a million times i have fatigue like oh really i've got ufo fatigue like i i'm just like ready and it's like now like it's like the government has acknowledged these things and it, but they like don't say they don't know anything about them. So it's like I need something new besides sightings. Otherwise, like and that's kind of why I posted it. it was just like no more of this. Like I don't want to see TMZ. And it's kind of funny to me that's gone full circle. That alien stuff was always like on tabloids, and then it became like very mainstream with documentaries and HBO and the government acknowledging it. And now it's back to tabloids. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I don't know. I'm kind of worn out on it. Carl. Our NASA budget in like the 60s, like mm-hmm. we were putting people on the moon, and I feel like we've really gotten away from like the outer space exploration. And just deep down, I feel like this is all black ops, government, like us building and testing and doing our own shit. So it's like, oh, well, the fucking guy in the Air Force who's flying the F-16 saw this orb. He doesn't know what it is. It's like, yeah, no shit. He doesn't know what it is. All this guy's mm-hmm. doing is flying fighter pilot missions. No one's briefing this guy and all this like. Like NASA's got to be doing stuff. Like they got to have the caves. They got to be mm-hmm. building this shit. Stuff. But I do believe in you. I, the aliens are coming for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And but like so, to that point too, like that stealth bomber, which is like the sweetest looking thing that's ever been invented. That black, you know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? That came out of Area 51. So like they 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 do have like legit purposes for some of these like black sites of the you know and then we get you know we see the technology for them like years and years later um but yeah so i don't know i don't know i'm kind of with you on that too where it's just like maybe that guy maybe we maybe it is us and the government the fact that they're acknowledging it might be just like a smoke screen mm-hmm. who knows because then one day they're going to come back and then it'll be People will be like, oh, those are all UFOs, and then the government's going to use it to scare and intimidate us. Guys, listen, if it's coming, you heard it here first. Probably not first, but it's coming. Yep. i just ready for it. Like, come or like, just too Shit much. Shit or get off the pot. Yeah, too much honey dicking going on. Yep. What do you want out of your aliens, Ed? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I just, you know. Well, there were- I wish I could say, like, Mars attacks, but. Do you want everyone to just be annihilated? Well, not not one of the <laughs> all time great casts. I'm telling you, go look up the Mars Attacks yeah. class. It cast. It is one of the best, biggest, boldest casts in the history of Hollywood. I mean, so. more like uh, like like looks wise. Oh, that's you want yes. the you, you know, okay. like, I like them a look classic. Look. Yes, yeah. I want a classic yeah. Martian. I want yeah. the aliens to look exactly how I've pictured them in my brain. Yes, that's all you that's want. All. I yeah. don't want them to be blasting Tom Arnold. There's those the uh, uh, those movie. leaked Podesta emails there you know, where he's like talking about like zero point energy and all these things with like aliens that are coming from like 2016. And it's like, well, what the fuck is that? I don't know what zero point energy is, but it sounds awesome. If we don't, if we just have like infinite energy that I don't know what that I don't know what zero point means, but that's something that's like in text and like leaked government emails that you can find. Sounds powerful. Sound, like, sounds important. We should figure that out. What's it called? Zero point energy. Did I fuck that up? He's not in that. Oh, Tom Jones is in that. Yeah, that's quite the difference. So who'd you say? I said Tom Arnold. Uh, he yeah, might, be, he Phil, might be in it. Is too. Phil Hartman in it? I always, in it, there was a time Michael when, J. Fox is in it. Um, Sarah Jessica Parker, Martin Short, Danny DeVito, Pierce Brosnan. Glenn Close, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Jack Nicholson, yeah. Yeah, Jack uh, Nicholson's a president. He's awesome. Yeah. Who do we need to do more information on this movie? Like who did the funding? Like how did they get all these people to do it? Did fucking, it make money? Uh yeah. Holy shit. It had a seventy million dollar budget and it made a hundred and one million. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. I, I'm I think I watched it recently. I can't remember why if it was on cable or it if used I was to be streaming on TV it. a lot. And I just got sucked in and couldn't believe how many yeah. Every scene they cut to, I was like, oh, my God, this is like an A-list 90s actor. <laughs> but then, like, every scene with one of those A-list 90s actors ends with them getting their head laser beam. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's almost like they said, like, hey, it'd be hilarious if we did an invasion. All you guys got. Yeah. It's on well, Netflix. Tim Burton directed it. It looks like, I mean, Jeff and Ken Jack gave it a 68 and a 70. So. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I might watch Mars Attacks tonight. There you go. Um, all right, post show. We were going to say we were going to squeeze this in, but we'll talk more of the post show. It uh, looks like Deion Sanders flipped the number one recruit in the nation Jackson from State. Florida State to Jackson State, which is crazy. I think Florida State's just got to hire him. Like, you have to just bring him back as the head coach. Mike Norvell or whoever is the guy there now, get rid of him, bring Dion to be the guy. Crazy. Crazy. They compare this kid. The article was on 24-7 that I read. They said he was the number one corner in the country, and if he wanted to, the number one wide receiver in the country. So apparently he's going to play corner in college, but he'll probably play both. They compared him to Charles Woodson. Pretty nice comp. Holy fuck. Yeah. What do you think? I mean – Imagine recruiting against Deion Sanders for the number one corner in the country, though. Like, even though Deion Sanders and Jackson say it's like, like Brian Kelly walks in the living room, Deion Sanders walks out. It's like, hey, I'm Brian Kelly, right? <laughs> and like, Deion Sanders is like, hey, I'm literally one of the greatest defensive backs of all time, one of the most electric athletes, and I figured out how to brand myself in a time when nobody could brand themselves, and all the future, like, I will make you the next big fucking superstar, Coach Prime. Like, you know, I'm Brian Kelly. I'm Coach Prime. Yeah. Like, fuck off. And the other thing that I think this show is like, you know, those things go viral every every year when, like, they unveil the locker room or the jerseys or, like, the, all these big, like, the bells and whistles of major college football. Jackson State doesn't have any of that shit. It's all they got is Coach Prime, and it works for the number one player in the country. Crazy. So maybe, you know, people are starting to reevaluate, like, what actually matters to these kids and you don't need neon helmets and shit like that and weight rooms with your lockers with your name on it or whatever Sounds pretty sick though it is <laughs> but like you know at the end of the day like what's your number one goal is i don't know it's just to, to me it, i always felt like that stuff was kind of over yeah but too. all those kids are like all about clout and shit like this generation it's all about putting it on the tiktok and the gram so like yeah that shit does play i wonder if now with nil that they're like, I don't give a shit about that. I got a, I got a million dollars well, of my own. Well, yeah, what Kiffin said, he's like, it's free agency. Don't, like, mince it. No one wants to say it, but it's free agency now. Didn't Texas just put something in where, like, if you're an offensive lineman, you get 50 grand now? Did they? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm making this yeah. up. I got to do some more research. Well, the, the, <laughs> the quarterback, Alabama, the Saban was like, before he played a game, he's already made a million dollars. So it's wild. It's crazy. So it's I don't know wild. what you make at Jackson State, but – Congratulations, Coach Prime. Huge yeah. news. Yeah. And he called it out. I think that clip's going around. Yeah, that yeah. Clip. I mean, it's just yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. That pro football show. Um, what else? I mean, the company, big company meeting today, like end of year meeting. Uh, we're here. Everyone's over there. This is like, is this one of the worst days to be there? It's just everyone's crowded around. You got to sit there. Your legs get cramped for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, Sitting Indian style on a concrete floor yeah. or an epoxied floor, I should say. Yeah, that's nice. We just got seven of us here just going to watch it on our couches. So yeah, There is something, though, about when Dave addresses the company and, like, you can tell it's totally off the cuff, but it still comes off. As I've sat through so many company meetings before I worked at Barcelona, I'm like, it's crazy. This guy can just come up and within five minutes of unprepared stuff, synthesize and summarize, like, you know, where yeah, – And make yeah. you feel good. Yeah, without, yeah. without having to go through, like, all right, team. You know, like, Jesus, give me a fucking break. Yeah. And – we have the. We should have at some point coming up. One of the best parts of Barstool is the like master year end video that Michelangelo yeah. or who 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 who. Yeah, Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. The year end, the full fucking twenty minute thing. Yeah, I think Jake did it a couple of years ago. Who uh, the editors always smash those. Whatever, Jake Lofowski, I believe his name oh, is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did a couple of years ago. It, it's a great reminder of like all the cool shit. Yeah, yeah. Like because you for just sure. forget about it because it, it happens so often. Like, oh yeah, that was. Now, yeah. Man. There's so much shit. Yep. When we sat in on it two years ago, I think it was in 2019. That so two yep. years ago, mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the main floor and being like, "Holy shit!" There and I think there were only 200 people there at that time or something. Yeah, now it's yeah, over it's three. Way, way it's wild. Well, all right, um, that's the rundown from Chicago. Uh, we probably the last one of the year. Probably. Right? What's up? That's I was gonna ask. I didn't know. Yeah, probably the last. Yeah. What's today's last, date? Today is the 15th, 15th. So, yeah, so probably the, the last one from us at least. Obviously, tomorrow and mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday from New York next week. But that's it from us. Thanks for watching us. We'll be uh, ready to go in 2022 from the rundown Chicago. So see you then.